Bolt Park, that's at 8.30. Put the full cordon in at the top end, Whitehall end. It's becoming a nightmare down the bottom end, over. There is nothing <laughs> happening. Thank God we've got to wait another thousand years before it's this boring again. We've got a pickaxe handle laying the floor, which is absolutely covered in blood, isn't it? Due to a number of people being crushed on that pavement, this road has been closed. It's still a night. I understand it or not? I can't believe I actually hear a police car. Yeah. Stay here. Stay there. As the tide's going down, he's basically going to wrench his leg off. Do you like policemen? Mm, I love them! It's early afternoon on the last day of 1999. Crowds of people are already arriving for what's expected to be the biggest street party in London's history. For the Metropolitan Police, it will be a night of unprecedented demand. The problems will be later on, just large groups, and we'll get a few boisterous people and start jumping up and down, and it'll start pushing the crowd. The problems then is a bit of crush problems there, and People get a bit scared and a few people will start running, trying to push away and fall over. For this one night only and for the first time ever, the police are turning central London into a traffic-free zone. No one knows how many people will turn up. The vast majority are looking forward to an evening of fun and revelry, though a few are sure to end up in trouble. One of the main police stations in central London is Charing Cross, in charge, Superintendent David Commons. I'm the operational commander for Charing Cross, looking after the station. Uh, I'll have a whole team of officers who will be dealing with prisoners who come into the station. And then obviously out in the West End, Leicester Square, Common Garden, and looking after the policing arrangements. By now, thousands of people are heading to the banks and bridges of the Thames. The River Police have called in every officer available. We have 60 or 70 officers actually working tonight. If um, anything does happen, we have a, a, a contingency plan to deal with any major incident on the river, uh, which has been worked at and practised over and over again, involving the PLA, the London Fire Brigade and the London Ambulance Service. Ho hopefully we won't have to test it tonight. Mounted police play a vital role in the control of large numbers of people. The stables at Great Scotland Yard usually house 20 horses. Tonight, more than 50 are being brought in. Their riders come from across the capital. I'm uh, Sergeant Cuthall. I'm a member of the Metropolitan Police Mounted Branch. And our job tonight is to ensure crowd safety. Graham Cuthall's horse is called Oracle. I'm very fond of this horse. I've had seven horses since I've joined the Mounted Branch. He is by far the best. He's as kind as a Christian. Not everybody will be in central London. Norbury, near Croydon, is a typical suburb. It's 10 miles southwest of the centre. Here, it's just business as usual for police officers Craig Anderson and Simon Castry. They'll be out on patrol in a fast response car. Well, basically, at the moment, we're just out on a general patrol, um, just keeping an eye on things. If, if we see anything happening, then we'll obviously have to deal with it. So we'll just have a general drive round until we get a call. 20 miles to the east, there's the Millennium Dome. The town of Greenwich is right on the Meridian Line. The police here are expecting a lot of extra pressure, especially on the pubs. Hey, my name's Mick Walpole. I've been serving at Greenwich Police Station for 13 years and I'm currently posted as the licensing officer. Things are just beginning to warm up in Greenwich Town Centre. Obviously being the heart of the Millennium experience, um, it's quite busy down there at the moment and it's getting busier by the minute. I'm Susan Clark, I work at the Greenwich Police Station and like Lindsay, I'm working tonight in Greenwich Town Centre where we're expecting uh, possibly 15,000 people just in the area we're working at. Back in central London, the scale of the police operation is becoming clear. 
Last New Year's Eve, there were only 1,200 officers in the capital. This year, 12,000 will be on duty, of whom 6,000 have been bussed in. But before they do anything else, they have to be fed. At five major centres across London and a host of smaller ones, the meals are the same. A choice between chicken curry and sweet and sour pork. So again, please. Really? Feeding 12,000 police officers will take over a tonne of rice, three quarters of a tonne of chicken and half a tonne of pork. To keep them going through the rest of the night, there'll be 16,000 sandwich packs, 60,000 packets of biscuits and at least 60,000 cups of tea. The police working overnight are on 12-hour shifts, out on the streets for four hours at a time with half-hour breaks. Force feeding, as the police call it, is done in sittings from 5 p.m. through till 10. And everybody gets the same meal, whoever they are and whatever their rank. Cheers. With five hours still to go, the bridges over the Thames are crowded as people jostle for the best position. There's a real fear of someone being pushed or falling into the water. The Marine Division of the Met have all their boats on the river. 20 craft, including six fast inflatables capable of up to 40 knots. Also on patrol are two new boats belonging to the fire brigade. But if anyone fell into the river, their life expectancy would be less than 10 minutes. Cold water, fast running tides, it's um, potentially a lethal thing to do. Uh, that's the one end of the scale of what might happen water-wise. Another end of the scale is if uh, a passenger craft collides with a bridge and sinks with all the people on board. I and mean, that's a huge incident and that'd be a major disaster which we would certainly hope would never happen again, but you never say never. At Greenwich, they're anticipating a huge influx of revellers. To get into the town centre, you have to have an official armband, even if you're a local resident. So it's 7.15. I've been posted outside this shop, which is open to the public at the moment. And basically, I'm to stand here and keep order for all these crowds of people that haven't arrived yet. But as you can see, there are quite a lot of people coming into this area now. There's nothing actually planned tonight for this area. The pubs are open, the restaurants are open, most of them are ticket only. There's nothing else, there's no music, there's no fireworks, um, there's no entertainment here. So people are coming in mainly on the off chance that there might be a good party move going on around the streets, I think, or just to go to the pubs. Back in central London, teams from the mounted division get ready to go out on patrol. Where are we going then? Where are we going? Like other police, the mounted normally supervise crowds in a group called a serial. From the left, the half section, left turn, walk up. A typical mounted serial would consist of an inspector, a sergeant and ten constables. A typical foot police serial would be 22 officers. Tonight, their main job will be to help control the crowds. They're going to have their hands full. The police have abandoned their usual Trafalgar Square policy of confiscating alcohol. Tonight, the booze will flow free. Four hours to go and people are coming into central London in much greater numbers and much earlier in the evening than anyone had anticipated. At New Scotland Yard, the nerve centre of the whole operation is the central control room, staffed by 50 officers. One key individual called Gold Command coordinates the response, not just of the police, but all related services like fire and ambulance. Hundreds of closed-circuit cameras monitored the revellers' every move. Um, Mr. Messenger. Yeah. The city's divided into sectors, and police can be moved from sector to sector as needed. The secret of this whole system is the serials, groups of police a bit like army units. 
At big events, they're used to control crowd movement by shunting them from sector to sector to set up living barriers called cordons. But there's never been an event as big as this. Tonight's policing is quite complicated because you've got a whole series of sectors with large numbers of serials and police officers on who are dealing there for public order and public safety. But we're still going to get the routine mundane calls coming in and that's what the night duty there to look after, particularly in and around Comet Garden. I've been in since late afternoon and those of you who struggled in, which you all have, will realise that there are a lot of people, huge numbers of people out there. And I think there's a crush from Westminster Bridge to, to Tower Bridge. To me, you know, tonight's about two things, I guess, isn't it? It's about patience. Patients with all those millions of people out there, most of them are drunk, most of them are happy drunk, most of them are going to be lost and they're going to be asking you for the 50th time the way home. And that's what you're good up up here, isn't it? So enjoy it. And it's about keeping a sense of humour, isn't it? And if none of that works, then just remember that for one night of the year you're earning more money than me and Mr Garfield. <laughs> They'll be earning their money tonight. There's loads of them just there, but the, the queue is right across the road, so it'll be your decision, OK? More than a million and a half people are already packed into the centre and the councils have authorised just 300 port -a It's a drop in the ocean. But the police helicopter reports that it's even worse down by the river. There are vast crowds of people, many of them with children. Many are anxious and looking for someone to blame. Well, on my own. Well, not just crazy business. Not just a crazy business. I mean, you're supposed to be organising this business. Mind your language. Well, you're supposed to be looking after it. It's unbelievable. What's the problem? What's the problem? You don't seem to be doing nothing. Yeah. I'm trying to go home, then. It's unbelievable. Go home. What will I ask you about you? Sorry. What's about you? No, what's the difference? You ain't got children here, have you? You ain't got children here. What's wrong with you, man? Bloody hell. Don't start with me, mate. Chucking in a bloody river. If you've got any problems, you know the ring. I'm not in the office, but you can get me on my mobile. <laughs> At Greenwich, PC Walpole sets about making sure the, nice the pubs here. aren't getting nice out of see. hand. Nice and see, please. Is he here? All right. Hey, yeah. I haven't seen you for some time. Just making sure everything's all right. Yes, you know. Awesome, yeah. How many people are you expecting tonight? 250. Yeah, well, I've dropped into most of the pubs now. Um, it's still pretty quiet. There's lots of people coming through the barriers into the one-way centre, but most of them seem to be going out to the Millennium Concert, which starts round about now. Um, it's going to get hellishly busy later on. I'll knock it on the head for now, come back, say about half past 10, 11 o'clock, and I'm sure it'll be a lot busier then. At Norbury, they're going out to their first major incident of the evening. Come on. There's a call to um, a male collapsed, um, bleeding, um, the reason not known. Obviously, we've got this being graded as an emergency call. We don't know whether he's up. You know, it might be a simple case that he's fallen over and hurt himself, or he may be the victim of assault or something more serious. Let me have a look at your head, because I don't want you bleeding to death on us. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. All right, keep, 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 your, hands, keep your hands down, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me have a look at your head. Meanwhile, the man's flatmate has locked do himself you, in the loo. Do you, under, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you, un yeah. do you understand English? Yeah. You yeah, need yeah, yeah. to go to hospital. The problem is uh, everything OK. It's, uh, well, there is a problem because I've got a big axe handle lying on the floor, which is absolutely covered in blood, isn't it? Yes, You've obviously yes, called yes. us. Now, keep... Yes. You're covered in blood. I don't want it all over me. All right? I've got a long night ahead of me. I don't need to get covered in blood now, do I? The male's got quite a serious head injury. Um, he's, it looks like he's been hit over the head at, at, with some, some sort of implement. Um, there's two people up there, neither of them want to speak to us. Um, so we're really in the dark as to what's, what's happened. They don't want police involvement, but um, he's managed to talk him into going um, with the ambulance crew out of hospital to have his head checked because, it, as I say, it's quite a serious injury. But um, that's the end of our involvement, basically, unless one of them makes any, some sort of allegation. There's nothing more we can do for him. Back in central London, Sergeant Cuttle and Oracle are out on patrol with Chief Inspector John Graham and his horse, Saffron. The Chief Inspector is in overall charge of the whole mounted force. As they move up the Strand to check on Waterloo Bridge, the street beneath their feet is already littered with trash and broken glass. The crowds here are tightly packed and some are hostile. 
the police decide to turn back. Norse wants to go left. We just felt it was unsafe to try and get across Waterloo Bridge with the, um, the volume of crowds. Uh, it's just causing too much of a problem, so we withdrew. Well, it's one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen. You see this um, most years in Trafalgar Square, but not in the surrounding streets. Uh, we see in the volume of crowd that we normally see in Trafalgar Square, everywhere, in the Strand, on the embankment, on the bridges. It's a, a tremendous, tremendously large crowd. The authorities had hoped that the millions who came would spread themselves out around central London. In fact, most of the three million people have all had the same thought, to get down to the river to see the fireworks. Further down Whitehall Place, can you uh, put the full cordon in at the top end, Whitehall end? It's becoming a nightmare down the bottom end, over. So what they're going to do now is they're going to put this cordon back in, completely close it so nobody can come down Whitehall Place until they've eased the congestion down on the embankment. It's a continual sort of um, give and take situation depending on monitoring the crowd in various locations. The police set up a barrier, but with few officers on foot to spare, keeping control depends on the authority of a man on a horse. I'm just telling you the situation. There are a lot of people down there, too many, which is why you're not coming through. An ambulance will come through because somebody's injured down there. You know, you're not going through, man, OK? Back in Greenwich, PC Walpole is having a much easier time. Right, come up 20 to 11. The Queen has just gone past on the boat, which has been about the climax of tonight. If you have a look around the streets now, there's more yellow jackets down here than pedestrians. Seems to be a total anti-climax to what we expected. Uh, the one or two pubs are heaving, which have let people in for no charge. Apart from that, the others are basically empty. The crowd isn't here. Don't know where they've gone, but so we've heard rumours that um, uptown is packed, the embankment, Trafalgar Square, but Fray Greenwich tends, looks like the non-event of the year, the main things are going on. In Norbury, Simon Castry and Craig Anderson are off on their second major alert. There's been a call to a fight um, between two males. One of the men has armed themselves either with an axe or a knife. And I believe it's over a possession of a car or something. Basically, another the result of drunkenness again. Um, the man, as you can see, has taken it out of the van here with, with a hammer, we believe. So, he's, at the moment, he's been arrested for criminal damage. Uh, it's not his van, so we've got to establish whose van it is, and we'll take it from there. We do not have to say anything, mm. but it may have to be one question, something which you need to allow the court. We're going to have to hang by the other in evidence, yeah. OK? It's all right. No, 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 on the river, with 35 minutes to go, the 16 fireworks barges are hauled into position and for safety, the pleasure boats are all called in. <laughs> On land, enormous crowds are still trying to find their way down to the river but more than a million are already there. There's a real possibility that sheer pressure of latecomers will push those people already on the banks of the river into the water like lemmings. But people who can see the river just ahead of them don't want to turn back. It's a recipe for disaster unless the police can persuade them to stop. 
I wouldn't even bother trying to get down to this end because you actually have chocolate blocks down there. Yeah. It's going to be chocolate blocks in this square and a chocolate block there. You might as well hang about here instead of over us. Four centimeters. Believe me, it can make a lot of difference. With four centimeters extra lateral suspension track, for example, you get superb handling and impeccable road manners. So you see, with suspension geometry, as with so much in life, size matters. It's what you do with it that counts. A tale of life, love, and the pursuit of hard cozy. Joseph Fiennes, Reese Stefan, Lancy Aluminium. Could this be the smoothest way to advertise John Smith's Extra Smooth? No. Free math stuff from the mirror. Have you heard about this free math stuff for schools? No, really. Yes, everything from detractors and set squares to calculators and computers. In my day, I had to work it out with a pencil. Collect tokens in the mirror, Sunday Mirror and Sunday People and help your children have more fun with maths at school. Over 5,000 people really do win in every Reader's Digest prize draw. So win it, don't win it. Reader's Digest! I am a non-smoker. Don't need a fag. Don't need one. I don't need a fag. Sometimes willpower alone just isn't enough to stop you itching for a cigarette. Don't need one. That's why there's Nicorette Inhalator to replace that hand-to-mouth action. Just one of five different ways we have to help relieve your cravings. Nicorette. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's no doubt that bottoms are a lot healthier than they used to be. Because new super breathable Huggies are even drier. In fact, clinical tests have shown they are now the driest nappy you can buy. So dry, Huggies actually help prevent nappy rash. That's <laughs> clinically proven. And that's the bottom line. Healthy, happy, Huggies. June Haynes here has been looking after mistreated dogs like Benji for the past 24 years, and she's been nominated for a well-earned break. So this year, Thompson are giving her a free holiday. <laughs> June's just one of 2,000 saints, angels and all-round good eggs who'll benefit when you book with Thompson this January. So why not make someone's year with Thompson's new Smiles in the Sun promotion? See the Daily Mail or Thompson Preferred Travel Agents for details. Note for Saint Finance, free insurance, and a lot of Vava Voom. The new Clio from Renault. Size matters. Starting this week, you should be getting a gift from British Airways. It could be anything from £20 off a flight to Paris to New York on Concord for just £160. <laughs> So who says Christmas is over? Something for everyone from the world's favourite airline. Less than an hour to go until year 2000 and in central London, vast crowds are still trying to join the dense throng all along the river. Superintendent Cummins goes out to assess the situation on his patch on the Strand. But you're not going to get into the river down here, it's just packed. Yeah, we've got an hour. Yeah, you'll need it. Right. OK, cheers. Um, do you know Charing Cross is? It's that way, but the railway station. Another railway station. Sorry. Sorry. Embankment. Embankment 2. Well, just, yeah, just yeah, well, it's down there and on the left, but I don't think you'll get down there. Well, it's, I mean, all the bridges are full at the moment. No, it's full. Can't get out. Where's home? South London. Can't get out of the river? You're going to have to walk a long way to get over any of the bridges. Yeah, well, if I were you, then I'd go down here, 
and just head that way and yeah. you'll get away from all these crowds. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Thank all right. You. Cheers. Bye. These are big crowds. These are bigger than I'd anticipated. I mean, this is the Strand, obviously, people... You know, you can see everybody who's asking me is trying to get down to the river, which is full here. But, uh, we have a lady here who's... Uh, Come on. Yeah, she's uh, somewhat intoxicated. Yeah, we've actually called an ambulance, though, but they uh, are as um, busy as we are, so they've sort of uh, not prioritised them yeah. this over an hour. In the dense throng, even the prisoner vans are stuck. You kind of claim the prisoner, have you? Um, we have, but it's been rather hard work. How long did it take you to get here? Uh, About two hours? Well, I'll tell you what, we started off at 10 past 10, just to the top there, just to get to Whitehall and back up again. Uh, it's uh, just solid, uh, isn't it? It's just absolutely crazy. I mean, these things are a waste of, waste of time. I don't think anyone's picked up a prisoner yet. No. Well, if you can't walk them in, you might as well leave them, yeah, won't you? Exactly. I think. As the minutes tick away, Trafalgar Square is packed solid, with more people than ever seen before on a New Year's Eve but a large section of the crowd seems determined to get down to the river. Police units have to try to avert potential disaster. This could not contrast more with the situation at Greenwich. Where was everybody? Um, I was talking to somebody from the council who explained that they did issue 9,000 wristbands initially and they reserved the other 6,000 for local residents. All of those 6,000 were ordered to be collected, but yesterday 4,000 were still uncollected. So there's a lot of people that thought they would be here tonight and didn't bother getting their wristbands for one reason or another. <laughs> Hopefully a few more people will come down and make it a bit more of a party atmosphere. But some have had a few drinks and are enjoying <laughs> themselves. <laughs> and some have needed Christmas drink. And uh, 
This is rather nice. Where did you get this from? Bob toilet. Where from? Oh, thank you. The toilet. I'm sorry. Happy New Year. So it's something you're doing. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Be 20, no, there was one on it's the half eleven now, and I think from now until midnight and beyond, I will be assigned to this little spot here. And uh, I'll be just waiting here, hoping something exciting is going to happen, but it doesn't look like it, is it? <laughs> As you look around here now, there's bugger all happening. <laughs> there is nothing happening. Thank God we've got to wait another thousand years before it's this boring again. Looking down the river, um, there's about 100 people gathered just watched the fireworks from the dome. You can see the dome quite clearly from just down behind me. It's probably the biggest density crowd I've seen in Greenwich tonight. Excuse me, duck engines. Oh, oh. Flying them all. Important star coming down, excuse me. <laughs> Well, this is the view everybody's come to see. It's probably the best view in Greenwich tonight. You can see direct to the dome, past the ship. Um, everybody here in good spirits. In Norbury, there's just time for a private moment. Are we out here, Simon? Yeah. What are you doing now, Simon? I'm just going to um, see my wife just before midnight, or I'll be in trouble, and I'm just going to check what I'm, what I'm doing tomorrow. Um, I've been posted elsewhere tomorrow, so I've just got to confirm some, a few details. Move off now. You've got four minutes to be somewhere special. What, you mean not next to you? <laughs> oh, my God, no, oh, I'm really under <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. right. You know, I'll never live this down. <laughs> I'll make sure they cut that bit out. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. you ought to. <laughs> well. OK. A happy new year to you all. You too, Jay. <laughs> just going to go and check on my prisoners now, you Keep know. Yeah. Tell them all, Happy right. New Year, we'll come in later on. Oh, we'll do. See you right. later. See you later. But with only minutes to go before midnight, the team gets its last call of the 20th century. A young man appears to have driven into a police panda car. There's a, there's a unit put up that require assistance. It's just down the road here at the Shell petrol station. So that's why, I mean, that's... The, that's why we're running to it as quickly as we are. Okay. I don't want to get in trouble with you guys. I'm really sorry about hearing you. Well, I mean... Alec, I'm really apologizing. you're going to have to report there is damage, mate, the bump yeah. was damaged. You've got to report yeah, it for, know, your, yeah, for your own yeah. reasons. Really sorry, yeah. You'll have to get, you'll have to get yeah. another yeah. unit well, we thought they were going to go for it, first yeah. of all. Yeah, no, no so problem. No problem. Uh, I'll quickly go out the car, because I, I can't yeah. believe I actually hear a police car. Yeah. Don't these things happen. You know, I've been drinking, you can test me. I've yeah. not been drinking anything. That's right. That's yeah. right. You know, I'm very sorry, officer. All right, we're going to have to get a, um, what's called a garage sergeant down here, right? Because he's a bit of damage. Right. We're going to okay, have to... Can I just go home quickly? <laughs> With just minutes to go, all the police horses are being brought back into Great Scotland Yard. They'll wait out the stress of the firework display in the familiar security of their stalls. Meanwhile, they discover the chief inspector's horse, Saffron, has a four-inch sliver of glass in his foot. Got he's trodden on some glass, unfortunately. Uh, normally, they don't allow um, alcohol in Trafalgar Square, so there's no bottles and things in there. But this year, they've, they've allowed it because it's obviously it's very hard to control that. The wound is treated immediately, so the horse can go out on duty again in less than half an hour. Put his foot down. Yeah. Because I knew he picked up something because he started going down. You can see it now. Yeah. I don't think there's any more glass. No, there isn't. Nice to get that little bit out. I like to see him walk something. Outside, with midnight literally minutes away, crowds are still trying to force their way down to the river and the thin blue line is only just holding them back. It could still get ugly.
But then, as the last few seconds tick away, the mood changes. Everyone, crowd and cops alike, is gripped by the realisation that the eagerly awaited moment has come at last. Hostilities seem to evaporate. Over a million pounds worth of fireworks go up in smoke in 20 minutes, but even as the show goes on, a couple of young men have somehow fallen off Lambeth Bridge and the fireboats and the river police swing into action to find them. Uncanny, really, this, this um, vast panorama of fireworks above us and this tremendous light show which was lighting up the whole river, which greatly assisted us in locating the person very, very quickly. Uh, but it seemed very eerie to be rescuing the person with this firework display all around you, and it was very, very loud. Happily, one man is quickly rescued, but the search for the other continues. It could have been much worse. The fireworks had drawn many more people to the river than anyone had anticipated, and many more of them could have been pushed in by the pressure of the crowd. Thankfully, that didn't happen. Yeah. All right, we'll leave you to it, gents. All right, Happy New Year. When it... In fact, it is the New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, John Boy. Happy New Year, Colin. Yeah, by the clock on the dashboard there, gents, it's one minute past 12. Happy New Year to you all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Does it feel special at this moment of time to be in a garage forecourt? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like a normal, a normal night shift. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Wish you every, all the best oh, in the good. future. Happy New Year. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah. Happy New Year, Joe. Did Joe? Did you have to bloody work on it? Did you enjoy it? We don't mind working because we're here the same as you. We've had a lovely evening on board the Cutty Sark. Oh, lovely. Spectacular fireworks display, plenty of champagne flowing all night, and it's the 21st century. Happy New Year. Happy New Year Happy to you. Happy New Millennium. You. Thank you. Where's that Lindsay gone? <laughs> Leaving me standing on my own. All these women kissing me. I've never been kissed by so many women before in my life. Oh, 
But then the rain started and suddenly three million revellers wanted to get home. Just when it seems as if the drama is over, the police face an emergency. Down at Westminster, a young man has been sitting on a river parapet with his legs in the gap between the stone wall and the pier. What he hasn't realised is that the 60-ton pontoon is dropping with the tide and now he's trapped. The Met officers on land radio gold control who contact the river police and other services. We've got some form of jack with you at all. The river policeman tries to contact his base, but his radio isn't working. He's given his ladders to the police who try to use them as a lever to open the gap. As the river ebbs, the pontoon will sink and crush his leg. The only remedy seems to be to close the Thames barrier. Can you get them to put the barrier in to stop the ebb? His legs are being cracked by the thing. Another boat brings a paramedic. He realises he will need to take drastic action. He may have to amputate. As the tide's going down, it's basically going to wrench his leg off, unless we can find some way of, um, of cutting the equi cutting equipment and cutting this um, metal worker bright or getting rid of the concrete. I'm going to need a doctor and a fit team down at Westminster Pier as soon as possible. Mr. Tindabal Sara of the Halifax helped sort out Jane Simms' repayment mortgage, which helped her buy the home of her dreams with a whopping great garden, which helped Humphrey stretch his legs, which didn't help Tiddles from next door, or Eric, the council cleansing department operative, or Peanut and his pride and joy. But it did help the blokes at the scrapyard eventually, who rather too often helped Mario of Mario's calf, whose culinary expertise helped rustle up the full English for Big Colin the cabbie, who helped take one of the more eccentric guests to the housewarming party at Jane Simms's place, which she bought with a little help from the Halifax. Curry's big brand sale is on now, with over a thousand prices cut. And Curry's exclusives, like £80 off this 1200 spin Ariston washing machine. 
If you spend 10 hours on free serve at peak time, the call charges will be up to £24. The same 10 hours on AOL costs a lot less. In fact, for a limited time, it will cost you nothing. Zero zilch. AOL's completely free trial offer. Look out for this pack. Now that's free. Ben was already in secondary school when Tim was born. I was very nervous about the difference in, in their ages, but Ben's so natural with Tim. Should we get a pizza? OK. Tim adores this shirt that Ben gave him. Yeah, he lives yeah. in that shirt, so it does get <laughs> washed a lot. But I, I want to keep it looking good. For clothes that get worn a lot, there's new Aerial Colour Guard. With some detergents, clothes can fade fast. New Aerial Colour Guard keeps clothes looking their best longer. Even without the age gap, they couldn't be closer. Muller well, light yoghurt. Should you be eating that? Yeah. It's virtually fat free. No, I mean the pleasure pain theory that's going around. No! What? Because I'm getting all this pleasure, some poor so and so is getting a load of pain to balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> so much pleasure. Where's the pain? Housework won't kill you. But why take the chance? M, a 44-page glossy magazine, free tomorrow and every Tuesday with the Mirror. Tom Hanks. It's a real sleeping beauty. Melanie Griffith and Bruce Willis star in Brian De Palma's The Bonfire of the Vanities tonight at 10.45 on 5. Westminster Pier early on New Year's Day. A man's leg is trapped by a floating pier. One of two London Fire Brigade boats arrives. The fireman decides to send the boat to Lambeth Fire Station for cutting equipment and, meantime, brings back a ladder and a hammer to try and break up the wall. But even as they work, the motion of passing boats is grinding the pontoon against the man's leg. All river traffic is stopped and the fireman successfully breaks up the parapet just minutes before it would have been necessary to amputate the man's leg. The man's thigh bone is broken but he will recover. He's taken in the fireboat to Lambeth and then by ambulance to St Thomas's Hospital across the river. Of course, that's not the only emergency of the evening. Two men and a woman died of heart attacks, another 35 people had medical difficulties, and St Thomas has accepted 400 minor casualties after midnight. Three policemen were assaulted. Through the whole night, police received a record-breaking 8,500 calls. Despite the load, the system worked. The fire brigade dealt with 476 calls. Back at Great Scotland Yard, the mounted units go out again on their last tour of duty for the night. What we're doing is just monitoring the, um, the crowd dispersal. Um, there's a steady flow through the square and constantly from the embankment along Northumberland Avenue here. All we're doing is sitting up here and seeing if, if we can uh, identify any crush points or uh, any crowd problems or disorder in the crowd. Seems to be going okay. 
A last burst of heavy rain helps keep everyone moving. As the police say, a good shower is worth a thousand coppers. Even so, most people are still in a good mood. By night's end, 49 people will have been arrested for drunkenness, 50 for other offences. Yeah, the queue that you're looking at there is all the uh, prisoners coming in who are waiting to get booked into the charge room, but the charge room's full, so they can't get in at the moment. I think there's an hour's waiting time. All right, lads. Well, so yeah, he's just told me. So well, you know. Well, why don't you just go your separate ways and it'll be all over them, won't it? Oh, I don't you don't want to spoil a nice right. evening, do you? Yeah, yeah I'm Well, nice come on. Nice yeah, lovely. Yeah. yeah, good. Okay. I'm fucking boring my eyes. I'm using the Yeah, well, we don't want to, you don't want to spoil a nice evening, do you? I'm having a nice evening. Oh, okay. Well, you'll have a worse one if you carry on with him, won't you? Cheerio. Um, well, it, it's raining and most people are making their way home now. There's only a handful of people left. Hopefully the people that have been to the concert will all go home quickly because it's raining and then maybe we'll be able to go home as well. Altogether, five people fell into the water and dozens got stuck on the River Foreshores. All were rescued except one. The police went on searching throughout the night for the second young man who'd fallen off Lambeth Bridge. Their search was unsuccessful. His body was found two days later. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Equinox is kicking out at six now. Oh, is it? Instead of four o'clock. Well, that'll help, so they'll, so they'll be... Exactly. And the tubes will be running by then. That's right. All the people I've met, all the PCs and sergeants, barriers have been the key, haven't they? We put filter cordons in earlier on. Right. And it, and it stopped crushing, it dealt with the public order, and it also reduced the crime. Were, it really did cut down yes. on the gangs that were wandering through. Once we put the cordons in... And you, and you put the cordons in in addition to the barriers, then? You, yeah. yeah. Wiggy, happy New Year. <laughs> One of our top officers here. All it normally says is, top of call, turn left, left again, straight up, join the queue. Yeah. Yeah. Lee, Lee, from, uh, it's been that all night, has it? Tonical Road. Head up that way. This way? Or that way? That way. Excuse me. Could you tell me uh, where we could catch the Piccadilly line? Well, the only, if, if you go north, it's Tonical Road. That's what? The, Tottenham Court Road. Tottenham Court Road. Straight up there. Do you know how far it is? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah, if you concentrate hard. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, the lights are red. Yeah, straight up there. If you go straight up Chancos Road and then turn left. OK. Unfortunately, as two million people try and take advantage of the free tubes home, the system collapses. A few people manage to squeeze onto the buses, but for most of them, it's a long walk home. The big night is over. There we are. All over. They might turn it. Yeah, stick the kettle on, Simon. I mean, it was quiet right up until half past 12, one o'clock, and I thought it would kick off then, but it, it really didn't. There's been steady flow of calls, but nothing really major, has there? They've all been domestics and assaults, and the time we get there, no one seems to want to know. Hey, before we go, I've got a chance. Happy New Year! I'm not giving you a kiss. No. Happy New Year. Oh, cheers. I'll see you in a couple of nights. He's done a good job tonight. Um, a little bit anxious at one or two moments, but on the whole, he's very good. I've quite enjoyed myself. I'm a bit tired. Would have liked it to have been busier earlier in the evening, but uh, on the whole, it's been a good night. All the preparation and the practice that we put into it was certainly paid dividends. The other thing I learned is you cannot afford to be complacent. You know, a lot of people have come. Hopefully a lot of people have enjoyed it. Yeah, they've been part of history and you know, most of the officers I've seen have said that the public has thanked them for making it a safe night for them. That's what they've done. Bit of a rest tomorrow. Big rest. Big rest and a bottle of champagne later, I think.